Today I'm going to show you how to export and save your photos and images all in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. This has been a much requested video and hopefully it doesn't disappoint. In this video we're going to look at how to export an Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the different export settings and what's the difference between JPEG and PNG and a transparent background and not a transparent background, how to produce a transparent background and what's it look like and much more. It's a lot of fun so let's get into it. We're just opening up a project from my last tutorial. If you didn't see the last tutorial we simply made a new document, brought in this Buzz Lightyear poster and we also brought in our friend Woody who is missing from the Lightyear movie and that's all we did. So I thought I'd look at this project again just for talking about export settings. Say I have made a bit of artwork and I am completely happy with it. Now if I'm being honest I'm not completely happy with this. I'd probably change the lighting of Woody a little bit. Position wise he's okay maybe it adds some text but certainly a change a bit of the the lighting of Woody just so he ties into this poster. I'll not do it now that's maybe for another time but if I'm happy with this poster and I want to export it there's so so many export settings on Affinity Photo 2. If I simply go up to these three lines I can go to down to export and straight away it's given us some export settings and lots of different file choices, PNG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, there's there's absolutely tons of choices. There's even PSD so you can save this as a PSD, open it up in Photoshop and you'll have the Woody layer and the Buzz layer and not all the effects transfer through but a lot of them do. It will not export this as a, P as a PSD. Normally JPEG is a good setting for exporting and we'll maybe just go over some of these export settings. We can change the width here either by tapping on it and making it maybe 1000 pixels by keeping that chain here that will scale it by 1000 to 1414. If we tap this chain now if I change the width to say 2000 pixels it's going to change the width to 2000 pixels but the height's also going to stay 1414 and that's going to look an absolute mess so we're not going to do that. The only thing about this, if you make a mistake here, you can't tap two fingers anywhere. You have to remember what the last export settings were. So thankfully, I know it was a thousand. If you can't remember, if you're mucking about and you can't remember, you simply go to cancel, go back to the three lines, go to export, tap export, and there we have it. Another nice way is just by moving your finger left and right you can see that those measurements will change. Generally I wouldn't do this because you kind of know the export settings you want and generally again if I know I want my width to be say one th oh, not 100 pixels Andrew but 1000 pixels by 1414. Generally I would make that in Affinity Photo those dimensions rather than changing the size here. Personal preference but normally that's what I would do. So we'll click cancel again just because I want to show you something else back in the export because at the minute we've got that with those dimensions and if we come down here it's saying it's 4.3 megabytes and we're going to actually look at it a wee preview of how that's looking. That's it scaled to 100%, which is great. If we wanted to change this to 1000 pixels, we can click on preview. And again, that's 100% scaled. So you can kind of get a feeling of how that's looking. And we'll just go back to export because I should really remember these settings and then I won't have to keep going back and forth. But if we look at this at the bottom, 4.3 megabytes. Why that's important? That's the file size and that's that's quite a small file size. But if we want to make it a bit smaller, we can click on the quality here and maybe type in 50% and you can see that it hasn't just half the quality, but it's under a meg now, under half a meg, sorry, 426.79 kilobytes. So again, we can look at the quality and you can start to see Maybe not on YouTube, maybe you can, but you can start to see a bit of a loss of quality. And again, you can move your finger left and right. Matte isn't important at the minute, and we'll come to that in maybe a second or two, because that's for transparency. Preset, there's some presets. We can go to custom, high quality, medium. Generally, I always save it to best quality. Normally, everything else, I leave the same, apart from the file name, where I'll simply just type in buzz 
It's always good to have a good file name and a good file structure. And if I'm happy with everything, it's JPEG, it's good quality, JPEG best quality, click OK. And now I can save this anywhere I want in the Affinity Photo, Chrome, Photos. I think I'll just save it in the photos here. It's under Buzz. We can make it a certain color tag if we want. And again, it gives us our file size. So I'm just going to click move and just to make sure we'll bring up our files icon and we'll go to the top. There we are. Buzz. Buzz is saved with Woody looking great. And that is our picture saved. Now, say for whatever reason, if I hide this background layer of Buzz and we just have Woody left, if I go back to my export settings, I talked about JPEG, PNG, it's another very, very important file structure. The brilliant thing about PNG is it will save a photo with transparent background if you're not sure what a transparent background is, that means the background will be clear just the same way. If we go back and just show this again, Woody is currently on a transparent background. If he was saved as a JPEG, all this bit would be white. Woody would be on a white background and would need to cut out the white or do something like that. Two fingers to put Woody back to where he was. So if I wanted to save this file, if I saved it, let's just do it actually. If I save it as a JPEG, and we'll just keep the good practice and we'll type in Woody and OK. And we'll put him in our folders. So now when I see Woody, there is Woody there. And if we just tap into it, you can see Woody is on a white background and we'll flick him away. If we go to these three lines and click export. Now, if we save him as a PNG and before you can save this as a PNG with a transparent background, if we just hit cancel and then we'll go to these three lines again and we'll come down to canvas and click transparent canvas. Now the white disappears and it's important you do that. If you're coming from a Photoshop background, normally the background, the canvas will always be transparent. That's not the case on Affinity Photo. By default, you have to tick that transparent because if you didn't, if you saved it as a PNG, it'd be a white background. Whereas now if we go to export PNG and we'll just type in Woody 2 and hopefully Woody 2 will be a PNG. And if we just hit preview, actually, you'll see the black means transparent or certainly the way iPad OS works, it means transparent. So if we click OK, we'll just move it here. And now if we bring our photos up and I'll maybe click these three dots and make it full screen just so you can really see what we're looking at here. So we've got Woody here. That is Woody, Woody one, so to speak, saved as a JPEG. And if we just tap, you can see Woody there and that's all great. Now, if we move across, it's Woody two and it's a PNG. And you might be thinking, Andrew, that just looks like JPEG. But if we tap now, because he saved on a transparent background, that now means that Woody is saved on a transparent background, which is absolutely brilliant. And if I just bring up Affinity Photo 2, just to really show you that, if I go to our Files app and move it to the side, just so you can really understand what I'm saying here, the difference between JPEG and PNG. Woody 1 is saved as a JPEG. So we can scale that down. You can see a saved white background. Woody 2 is saved as a PNG. So if I bring this Woody in, just swipe this across. You can see straight away, he's now saved on a transparent background. And that's really, really important, depending on how you want to save your files. Sometimes I'm doing artwork and it needs to be a transparent background for, for lots of different reasons. Maybe I'm working on Woody and touching him up and then I want to bring him into another application. And if he's saved as a transparent background, that's so, so much easier to work with because now we'd have to, we'd have to cut this version out and it just wouldn't look as good. I'll just, uh, swipe and you maybe seen what I did there. If, uh, if you want to select multiple layers, just click one layer swipe the other layer and now both those layers are grouped. If we hit the recycling bin, now we've got our poster back. So we'll go to our export settings again. We've looked at PNG 
and how we can save that as a transparent background. We've looked at JPEG. There's lots of other different file types here. To be honest, apart from PNG, JPEG, sometimes I'll save a, P a PDF. To save as a PDF, there's tons of options here. Really, you don't have to worry about much of this unless you're working for text. And I'll maybe show that in a different video, but if we click OK, that'll save it as a PDF. And that's just a different way of, uh, of saving it. PSD, the very odd time, if I need to do something in Affinity Photo, at the early days, I would have uh, brought something into Affinity Photo and cut it out using Apple Pencil and the pen tool. And then I would have saved it as a PSD or as a PNG, but as a PSD with uh, the, the object cut out and then bring it into Photoshop on my Mac. But now I do everything really in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. So I don't use that setting as much. ESP, SVG, and some of these other are for vector types. And really that's for Affinity Designer or Affinity Designer 2. Really, you'd be saving a lot of files as these two types, but mainly PNG, JPEG. And the only other export setting I want to tell you about now is this share button, because sometimes it's very useful. If I click share, I can transfer this document straight away to my Mac Pro, which is just here, <laughs> out, of, out of camera shot, or I can put it in lots of these other different apps. And to be honest, Darkroom is where I would maybe share this to. And very soon, I'm going to be doing a bit of a review of Darkroom. Darkroom is a bit like Adobe Lightroom. And if I just tap into it, it will bring my document into Darkroom. And there's lots of different settings here that I can change and color correct or color grade this here poster and quite often I would do that but we're not talking about dark room today that, that's a wee preview and uh, another app that we're going to come to very soon if we go back to share you can save the image here you can print it out here you can save it to files here import it to different settings absolutely tons of settings so there you have it hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you learned something please like and subscribe if you found any value in this video and as always thanks for watching hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next video